Kennedy Welding and Service is located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. Whether you're in need of a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, you've come to the right place when you come to Cox and Kenyuk Electric on Cochrane Road in Meadville. Contact Cox and Kenyuk for fast and reliable electrical repair and installation services. With over 30 years serving thousands of customers, we have the experience and quality customer service needed for any electrical project or problem you may have. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. From industrial and commercial electrical work and repair to date lines for computers and more, AMP Electric and Guys Mills is here for you. Call today for an estimate or quote on your electrical needs at 814-789-3202. AMP Electric also provides bucket truck service and 24-hour emergency service. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. Located at 15428 Sheets Road in Guy's Mills, the R. Hunter Inc. is a family-owned business started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding area. Owner Ralph Hunter offers a variety of excavating services as well as gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Give them a call today at 814-724-9076. Belco Tool Manufacturing, located at 225 Terrace Street Extension in Meadville, would like to wish the Lady Tigers good luck in the PIAA playoffs. We're rooting for you. For all your tool and die needs, call Belco Tool Manufacturing at 814-337-3403. That's 814-337-3403. That's Belco Tool and Manufacturing in Meadville. The Oswego Valley Sports Boosters are a proud supporter of all Oswego Valley Green Wave athletics. The Sports Boosters would like to congratulate the Lady Green Wave volleyball team on their tremendous regular season and wish them the best of luck in tonight's playoff matchup. Go Green Wave! The Maplewood Football Boosters are proud of our Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run towards a PIAA volleyball title. We're rooting for you and know you're making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers! They have braved the weather and the treacherous journey to get here to the Joseph A. Massa Gymnasium at Warren Area High School with a berth in the state championship on the line and PIAA Class 1A semifinals. It's Oswego Valley and Maplewood playing tonight here for a chance to go to the state championship on the YDL Sports Network. Good evening, everyone, and welcome on into the broadcast booth here at Warren Area High School. Brian Hagberg and Andy Close with you for the YDL Sports Network. Network. So happy to be uh, bringing you this PIAA Class 1A semifinal matchup. And Andy, two teams that uh, really have been on just an incredible roll here through the postseason. Yeah, both uh, obviously both teams very talented, saving their best volleyball for when it matters the most. Uh, obviously both district champions. Um, how great is this, a District 9 versus District 10 team for the right to represent in the state championship um the you know, oswego valley this is the furthest they have ever been um the only other team in program history to accomplish what they've accomplished is the 1984 boys cross country team which won a state championship maplewood meanwhile uh a storied history in volleyball five state championships most recently coming in 2017 uh but but again to your point um I i've seen both these teams a lot uh, throughout the regular season and postseason and uh, this is this is truly a toss-up. It's what you would expect from a PIAA semifinal and what a matchup it should be. Uh, and certainly neither team had any kind of easy road to get here. I mean, even starting with the, the district playoffs for, for both of these teams, uh, you know, obviously Maplewood had to uh, contend with a very, very talented Cochranton team over in District 10. And, and as you mentioned, Oswego Valley going through uh, District 9 had to beat uh, El County Catholic for that championship over in District 9 just to get it into this state tournament. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, Cochranton and Maplewood met early in the season. They played twice during the regular season, being in the same region. Cochranton handled them 3-0 uh, the first time around. It really wasn't that close. Maplewood comes back and beats them 3-2 at the end of the regular season. Then, of course, uh, 
turns in a stellar, stellar effort in the D10 uh, title match. And, uh, yeah, Oswego Valley getting by a very good Elk County Catholic team. Kind of rolled through the North Tier, really. Otto Elder, probably their closest challenger in the North Tier League. Uh, get to the D9 title, beat Elk in three. And then, if I'm not jumping ahead here, get to Sarah Catholic in the first round of the state playoffs. Go up 2 nothing. Sarah Catholic comes back and ties it at 2-2. And it's looking like from a sure thing to maybe this isn't going to happen. But OV rallied. Um, winning 15-13 in the fifth set, and now here they are in the state semifinals. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, that sweep uh, that Maplewood suffered against Cochranton in their first matchup of the season. And I had a chance to talk with uh, Bailey Varndell a couple of weeks after that match, and it seemed like that just served as motivation for them to really go out and, and try to run the table the rest of the way. Yeah, and I think they knew they were better than what they played that first time against Cochranton, and that's no disrespect to Cochranton because, I mean, they're a great team and a great program uh, as well. But, but yeah, really kind of refocused this group, and uh, and you've seen it. I, I was there for the D10 title against against Cochranton, and, uh, and boy, were they impressive. Um, not much of any mistakes to speak of, and uh, just – it's been more of the same here in the PIAA playoffs. And you touched on a little bit, uh, you know, the resiliency that Oswego Valley had to show in that first round matchup uh, against uh, Sarah Catholic in the state tournament. Rallied back to to come back and, and win that match. And again, really it seemed like once you got once they got through that kind of adversity, uh, were really able to go on a, a little roll of their own. Yeah, and credit to them. Uh, talking to Coach Ken Keller, you know, afterwards. He thought, you know, he's like, I didn't have a good feeling after that fourth set. He's just like, but our, our body language wasn't, you know, what it usually is. He's like, the, the girls were a little down. But but a credit to his senior leaders, he said, for really kind of rallying the troops there and saying, hey, we've come too far to let it slip away like this. We got this. And uh, and to their credit, they came back. Then, funny, that fifth set, they got up 11-4 to four in that fifth set. Uh, Sarah Catholic comes back and cuts it to 14-13 before Olivia Cook gets a kill to end it. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they then come back in their in their next match in the quarterfinals against Connemont Township and really, uh, you know, take care of business in three, and uh, he's showing uh, kind of a carryover from that fifth set uh, against Sarah Catholic, and here they are on the biggest of stages. I do want to take a moment here in the pregame to thank uh, both the Oswego Valley School District and Sports Boosters, as long as well as the uh, Maplewood uh, Sports Boosters School District, uh, for helping us bring you tonight's matchup, the state semifinal here in class 1a and we touched on it right off the top a little bit but um a little bit of a delayed start here tonight uh due to the inclement weather uh the teams were rerouted and uh you know maplewood didn't get here to warren area high school until just after six o'clock uh and, and oswego valley was even farther behind them yeah and uh speaking speaking to the folks you know from shingle house and oswego valley making that trip over um, any, anyone who's made that trip uh, in inclement weather knows that just how treacherous it can be. Uh, I've made it myself many times, and uh, they actually had to get rerouted off of Route 59. <laughs> Give a little geography lesson here for people that want it. But, yeah. uh, down into Kane, then back, and then back up. So, uh, you know, an hour and 25-minute trip turned into an almost three-hour trip. Yeah. And uh, But both teams arrived safely. Um, you know, it's fu- probably a funny story that they'll tell years mm-hmm. later. Hey, remember that state semifinal? It took us like three hours to get to Warren. But, uh, no, both teams are here, and uh, I don't really think that'll be an issue in terms of how the match is played tonight. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that is that is going to be one thing to watch early. Does either team, you know, due to the, the extended travel, the delayed start, do they come out, you know, flat? Does it take them a while to get into a rhythm, either offensively, defensively, whatever? Um, but something to keep an eye on for sure. And uh, we just found out, just, just got word, uh, the winner of this match is either going to get Sacred Heart, uh, the District 1 champion, or West Branch, the District 6 champion, uh, in the state state championship match on Saturday. That match, the semifinal between Sacred, Sacred Heart Academy and West Branch, has been postponed due to this weather. So okay. these teams are not going to find out who they play until tomorrow night. Yeah, and uh, we saw that uh, early in the day news broke that all the soccer championships were uh mm-hmm. State semifinals were postponed till tomorrow, and, and volleyball being affected as we've seen that—that that wasn't the first volleyball match right. uh, to get postponed. So whether uh, across the Commonwealth playing a role here tonight, <laughs> uh, not everyone able to get their match in, get their game in. Uh, but we are here tonight, thankfully, um, and it's uh, boy, looking forward to it. It's uh, going to be a packed house here as both teams have yeah. 
fans have filled in here to Joseph A. Massa Gymnasium in Warren, and uh, you can kind of feel, you can feel the energy in the building. Yeah, it's a, it has the feel of a state semifinal, and yeah. it is. It should, but it, <laughs> it does. Uh, I was talking to uh, Jeff White, Ward Athletic Director, and he said uh, more tickets were sold for this game than any other across the Commonwealth uh, tonight, and uh, that's impressive. And, and it, the weather certainly hasn't kept anybody away. No, uh, I mean we're, I'm looking down below our our position here. Uh, the bleachers are essentially full. There's a couple of seats here and there looking out across, and it's packed. And, and even the balcony right now uh, is more than 50% full, I would say. You know, we may end up with a standing room only crowd before it's all said and done. You know, and some some good things to see, too. It, when you get to these neutral sites, sometimes I see a, a number of uh, Sheffield Wolverines players along with Coach uh, Melissa LeMay are here to uh, support the Green Wave. Uh, I've seen a number of uh, Warren volleyball players come in. I, I assume they're here to, to uh, support their uh, District 10 companion in, in Maplewood. And this crowd already, I mean, even before they officially started warm-ups, was getting into it and getting jacked up. Yeah, and uh, t- just to build on that, too, I saw a couple of Countersport Falcons, Letterman jackets around here, too, here to support uh, the Green Wave. And that, that's so special to see. I, I think, you know, these kids, and I, I'm going to date us here a minute, Brian. It's not quite the same as when you and I were growing up a, in high school. Um, you, where you maybe knew one or two kids on the opposing team. Yeah. It, it, the world has gotten smaller and smaller through, you know, social media and technology and whatnot. And these Many of these kids, you know, from other schools know each other. They have friendships, relationships, and it's neat to see them out uh, supporting each other because this is this is special. You know, it's special to get to this point, and it's nice to see the other kids coming out and celebrating that. Yeah, absolutely. You love to see, you know, athletes supporting other athletes. Compete, compete hard when you're on the field, when you're on the court, when you're on the pitch, whatever. Um, you know, but when you're not squaring off with each other mid-game, it is so great to, to see the – the support that these athletes give to each other uh, day in and day out. Oh, no question. And there's a, well, we're getting right down to it here. Got about a minute and a half here left on the pregame clock. Maplewood uh, finishing their warmups. Uh, Coach Ken Kellard has Oswego Valley's, his team huddled up there and uh, along their bench. And uh, yeah, we're getting so to- let's take a minute then, Andy, and look at your first, before we get to our players. So, yes. I want to mention our game stream. It's always brought to you by the Computer Guru of Leer- Leaper. Visit them online, computerguru.net. And uh, now our uh, players to watch. Andy, first for Oswego Valley. Who are you looking at tonight? Yeah, I'm uh, obviously it starts with their hitters, Olivia Cook and Avery Keller. But I'm going to go and I'm going to feature the setters tonight. I think they're, they're critical, obviously. Trinity Lundy has done a great job uh, throughout the postseason, throughout the entire season, really, for Oswego Valley. Uh, 55 set assists in their two PIAA playoff wins. Had a big match in the, the first round win over Sarah Catholic, and she really sets up her hitters to be successful. Uh, she's played at an elite level here in the postseason. All right. Well, I'm going to ask because, you know, that's the good lead in, and that's what good play by play guys do. <laughs> but uh, I have a good feeling who your player to watch is going to be then for the Maplewood Tigers. Yeah, uh, Bailey Varndell, again, another setter with a lot of experience, been in a lot of big matches. And uh, again, this Maplewood team has a lot of big hitters too. You know, Sadie Thomas, you know, Elizabeth Hunter, you can go across the board. Um, but Bailey works with them very well. She's, uh, you know, any great hitter will tell you, you know, it starts with the setter. And uh, we got two great ones here tonight. So they are my players to watch. All right. With that, we're going to uh, bring the pregame to a close and take a very quick break. We'll be right back with more of this PIAA Class 1A state semifinal. The Oswego Valley Sports Boosters are a proud supporter of all Oswego Valley Green Wave athletics. The Sports Boosters would like to congratulate the Lady Green Wave volleyball team on their tremendous regular season and wish them the best of luck in tonight's playoff matchup. Go Green Wave! The Maplewood Football Boosters are proud of our Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run towards a PIAA volleyball title. We're rooting for you and know you're making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers!
That was uh, Warren Area High School music director, Mrs. Marsha White, with the national anthem here tonight. Uh, and they're making the announcement uh, Oswego Valley will be the home team on the scoreboard here at Warren Area High School. Maplewood will be considered the visiting team. As we are just about set for tonight's starting lineups. First for Maplewood, we'll turn it over to public address announcer, Matt Madigan. And those were your starting lineups tonight. Again, special thanks to public address announcer Matt Madigan for those introductions. And before we get started, I want to take a minute and let you know that uh, tonight's broadcast is under copyright. Any reproduction of this broadcast without the express written permission of the PIAA and the YDL Sports Network is prohibited. All right, bro. You can, as I said earlier, during warm you can feel the energy in this gym. Um, Let's get it going, man. This is the PI. This is a trip to the state championship on the line. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Uh, it's Maplewood. It's Oswego Valley. Let's do it. As teams will come to the net and shake hands. And uh, like you said, Andy, we've got the headsets on. And it almost feels like we need to be shouting at each other. It is absolutely electric in here. Uh, you know, and 
really a, a great environment. The way this gym is is constructed, the the remodel that they've done, fans are right up on the court, and uh, when you get a great crowd like this, it can really take off. So Oswego Valley will serve first. It'll be Trinity Lundy back at the line for the Green Wave. This is a check the rotations, and we are underway here in this Class 1A semifinal. Barndell sets for Hunter, dug out there by West, and then put right back down by Elizabeth Hunter. McKenna Crawford to serve for Maplewood. Crawford puts it over, and Olivia Cook can't handle it. And uh, it was Crawford that uh, had the big serving game in the semi in the quarterfinal win over Homer Center, so more the same to start here. Maplewood out to the early lead here in set number one. Crawford puts it into the net. And as I say that, the old <laughs> announcer's jinxed. We'll send Praylin Perkins back to serve for the Green Wave. And Vardell just tips it over. Savvy move there by the Tigers setter. Yeah, and that's part of what you're talking about there with that experience, just uh, knowing, knowing when to do that, and she caught Oswego Valley off guard there. And then she'll head right back to the service line. Maplewood leading 3-1 here in set number one. Passed over to Lundy and then blocked at the net. I believe that was uh, Megan Woji got her hand on it along with Savannah O'Hara. And Barndell served, dug out there by Cook over to Lundy, back for Cook. Crawford got a hand on it, but then puts it out of play. Cook serves that one right into the net. So maybe a little bit of those nerves that you talked about, a couple service errors, one on each side here in the early going. Sadie Thomas puts it over for the Tigers. Manning to Cook, and then sent over by Kellert. And Barndell sets it for O'Hara, who puts it down just out of the reach of Perkins. And that's uh, Savannah O'Hara again for the Tigers. Thomas serves it. Cook to Lundy. And right back to McKenna Manning. She'll put over the free ball. Crawford to Varndell. And tucks it inside the line. That was Megan Woji. Maplewood out to a 7-2 lead here to start set number one. And Lundy tips it over. Wojci puts it right back. Lundy sets it right down for the big kill by Avery Keller. Yeah, and may maybe that will help settle down Oswego Valley here a little bit. Sends McKenna Manning back to serve for Oswego Valley, trailing 7-3 here in the first set. Thomas passes it over to Varndell for Woji who put over the free ball. Lundy sets Keller. Varndell there to dig it out. Gets it to Crawford. Thomas puts it over, but out of play. And that will be Manning again to serve for Oswego Valley. Crawford passes over to Madison O'Hara. Lundy sets Keller off the block and just in front of a diving Thomas. 
All right, so last three points to the green wave. And one, the thing about either of these teams, they're not going to get rattled by an early deficit. There might be some nerves, but there's not going to be any panic. And he puts it over. Crawford passes to Varndell, sets O'Hara. But Manning is there, gets it to Cook. And then Keller puts over the free ball. Thomas to Varndell again for Woji through the block. Perkins tried to keep it alive, but went off her hand and out of play. And that stops the uh, mini run there from the green wave and sends Woji back to serve for the Tigers. Keller over to Lundy, sets Keller. And Thomas's pass, Varndell was able to take off the net, but couldn't control. Eva West will serve it for Oswego Valley. Thomas to Varndell for O'Hara. Off a diving cook. Maggie Means comes in to serve for the Tigers. Means a freshman. She puts it over. Keller with the attack, but Varndell is there, passes to Crawford. And then that's uh, O'Hara off the block of Keller. Boy, O'Hara off to a great start here. Means over Keller, can't control it cleanly. That little trouble with the serve receive here for Oswego Valley in the early going. Means to Keller, to Lundy, back to Keller. Off the block, but Crawford is there, gets it to Varndell who pushes over. Perkins puts it right back, Hunter. Off of West. Yeah, we're going to get a timeout here as well, Valley. Ken Keller. Smart timeout there by Ken Keller. You know, and we talked about the strong start for O'Hara. She didn't see time in a couple of these playoff games at all. Had, had been outplayed and then came back in that quarterfinal match and just was really strong for the Tigers and really forced uh, Sheila Bancroft to put her back in the rotation. Yeah, and, and and Coach Bancroft said how she worked, how she wanted that spot back. And it's – and coaches – you know, Sheila Bancroft's savvy. She's been around state championship. She's been a state champion. She knows what buttons to push. And, uh, you know, some coaches might not be – might be reluctant to make a move, uh, especially during the postseason. But she's made a few of them, and they've all – they've all worked out beautifully. And, and credit to O'Hara, too, for uh, – you know, not getting down on ourselves, but really putting the work in to get back on the floor. All right, so we come out of the timeout. Maplewood leading 12-6 here in the first set. Maggie Means serving, and the Maplewood faithful giving her plenty of encouragement. And a strong student showing here for the Tigers as well tonight. Means puts it over. Cook to Lundy for Keller. And a diving dig there by Means. Varndell will put it over. Lundy sets Perkins this time. Means is there again. Varndell this time for Thomas from the back row. And Lundy tips, but Thomas is right there. Pass to Varndell. Over to O'Hara, but it's dug out. And nice Green Wave with Cook. the free ball gets it over. Means to Varndell. Hunter. Cook is there. Gets it to Lundy, and Keller will put it over. Varndell to Hunter. And Perkins puts over the free ball. Long volley here. Varndell for Hunter off the block. Diving. Digged there by West. Keller with the tip, but Thomas is there. Varndell with the push. Lundy gets to it. Keller with the attack, and Crawford gets there. Thomas from the back row. Right to West. Lundy for Perkins off the block. Crawford gets to it. And free ball there by Thomas. Lundy for Keller. 
Hammers it dug out by Means, but out of play. Wow. What a volley. And both both uh both sets of fans applaud that Man, one. That you was see phenomenal. Right now, why these two teams are in the state semifinals after that. Keller serves. Crawford passes to Vardell for Hunter. West is there. Fight at the net. The green wave get it over. Thomas to Vardell for Hunter again. Off the block. West goes down to get it. Cook and puts it right in front of Means. Yep, been waiting for Olivia Cook to get involved there in the offense, and there she is. Uh, she's had some big matches here in the postseason, gets her first kill of the match there. Keller to serve. Crawford passes. Varndell comes to get it. And that's off the antenna. That was uh, Madison O'Hara. So after the timeout, the last three points here, the green wave. Means with the pass, it hits off the rafters. And Tigers will put over a free ball. Lundy sets for Cook. Cook off the block and down. And now it's Sheila Bancroft's turn to call timeout. And we are going to take a quick timeout with them. Don't go anywhere. This state semifinal is just heating up here on the YDL Sports Network. Located at 15428 Sheets Road in Guy's Mills, the R. Hunter, Inc. is a family-owned business started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding area. The owner, Ralph Hunter, offers a variety of excavating services, as well as gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Give them a call today at 814-724-9076. Nestled in the northwestern corner of Potter County, the Oswego Valley School District serves families from Shingle House and Oswego Boroughs, as well as Clara, Sharon, Oswego, and Ceres Townships, providing educational opportunities to children in both Potter and McKean County. The Oswego Valley School District would like to wish the Green Wave good luck in tonight's semifinal match. Back here at Warren Area High School, 12-10, Maplewood leads Oswego Valley in this Class 1A state semifinal. Means diving dig, Cook and Varndell at the net, it rolls down. Over on the Maplewood side, Varndell tips it, Cook saves, Lundy blocked down by Hunter, but the Green Wave keep it alive and Cook hammers it! Oh, and Olivia Cook making her presence felt here. It's now a 5 nothing run for the Green Wave. Green Wave within a point. 12-11 as Kellert will serve. Means passes high to Varndell. Thomas from the back row. Easy play there for the wave. And Cook with the tip, but Hunter was right there to put it back over. Perkins this time hits Means right in the face. Almost saved. Oh, man. By Madison O'Hara. And uh, Means is feeling that one. Holy cow. We are tied at 12 here in set number one. Last six to the green wave. Crawford puts it over Thomas. West to Keller. And the green wave keep it alive. Means for Vardell. Gonna get a carry. Yeah, gonna get a carry on Vardell. And Oswego Valley takes the lead. Means passes to Madison O'Hara for Varndell right into the net. Tigers struggling a little bit here. Yeah, the run is now 8 0. Tightness can build a supply run for the Green Wave. Crawford gets it to Hunter, and Varndell will just put it over. Keller to Lundy for Cook, and Cook with authority. Boy, Cook, after a slow start, now has four kills. And the Green Wave now lead by three, 15 to 12. Well, I saw a run like this. In fact, well, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh... <laughs> And Keller just too strong on that serve, and she knew it immediately, oh, yeah. came over, pointing to herself. Uh, but uh, a much-needed point there for Maplewood. Ending the 9 nothing OV run. Tigers to serve. 
trailing by two now. Keller to Lundy for Cook. Means is there, gets it to Varndell, passes over to Thomas. Thomas with a little touch, and Lundy can't handle it. She was gearing up for that big Thomas hit, and Thomas just kind of placed it softly over the net. Nice play. And it looked like Thomas saw them gearing up for the big hit and uh, threw a little changeup at him. Keller passes to Lundy for Cook. Right into the net. And so now Maplewood, 3 nothing spur here to tie it back up. Tied at 15 here in set number one. Lundy gets it over for Cook. Off the block, diving dig. Means gets to it, and Varndell's going to put it over the net. Lundy for Perkins. Thomas was there. And diving dig by Perkins. Green Wave keeps it alive. Varndell sets Thomas again. Touch, couldn't get over the net. Yeah, I, I see what she wanted to do there. and Just couldn't quite get it over where she wanted. Yeah, you could see Sadie Thomas setting up for the, just that little tip over the net. Didn't quite put enough on it. And the point goes to the Green Wave. Crawford to Varndell for Thomas. Hammers this one off the block. Sadie Thomas with her second kill. <laughs> Thomas said, fine, you don't want the change up? I'll come hit you with the fastball. <laughs> Put that one down. Crawford serves. Right to Cook. Gets it to Lundy. Right back for Cook. Dug out there by Means. And then saves it, puts it over the net for Cook again. And this time Means can't get there. Yeah, boy, it was a great dig on the first attempt. But, man, it's, it's tough. Olivia Cook had some mustard on that ball, both of them. 17-16, Oswego Valley leads. Braylon Perkins to serve. O'Hara to Crawford. Thomas from the back row right to Kellert. Lundy for Cook again is blocked down by Thomas. And Savannah O'Hara comes back in as Varndell goes to serve. With set number one tied at 17. Cook to Lundy right back for Cook. Blocked down again. Thomas and Woji. And Maplewood retakes the lead. Back and forth we go after a pair of big runs by each team. Varndell serves, leading 18-17. Perkins to Lundy. Dug out there by Varndell. Thomas dug out by Perkins. Lundy for Cook with a little tip. O'Hara is there, gets it to Varndell, over to Thomas. And Lundy got a hand on it, but Kellert was diving and couldn't recover after the misdirection. Just one of those unfortunate, unlucky plays if you're the green wave. And Varndell with the service error gives it right back to Oswego Valley. Cook serves, Crawford passes to Varndell for Thomas, and off the block. Four kills now for Sadie Thomas. And we talked about Cook taking a little bit to get going here in this first set. And the same could be said for Sadie Thomas, but now she's starting to uh, rack up the kills here in set number one as the Tigers lead it 20 to 18. Free ball over the net. Crawford gets it to Varndell. For Woji, who finds the uh, vacated space. Woji's third kill, and more importantly, a three-point lead here for Maplewood. Tigers up 21-18 here in the first set. Thomas serves. Just too long on that one. Boy, that was close. <laughs> I have a tough one to let, let that one go, but... Uh, 
good judgment there from the green wave. 21-19, Maplewood here. McKenna Manning serves. McKenna Crawford receives over to Varndell. Thomas from the back row. Cook to Lundy, sets Kellert. And Thomas in the falling down dig. O'Hara puts it over. Cook is there, gets it to Lundy, over to Perkins. Crawford. Varndell for Thomas. Cook is there. Lundy gets it for Kellert. Thomas to Varndell. Tipped over the net, saved by Keller, and goes over for the point for Oswego Valley. O'Hara just got tied up on that because she, it looked like she wasn't sure if that one was actually going to go over the net or not. Manning serves. Green wave trail by a point. Barndell sets Thomas. Cook to Lundy for Keller with a tip. Misdirection, but O'Hara's there to get it. Thomas puts it over, but right at Cook. Lundy for Keller. Tip down. Put over the net. Keller again. Varndell this time over to Crawford. And Thomas puts it over. Lundy this time for West and gets it just past the block. And we're tied at 21. What a great play there by West after really, I'll tell you what, Bailey Varndell is playing great uh, defensively for Maplewood as is McKenna Crawford. And it will be McKenna Manning serving right into the net. Loji back to serve for the Tigers. Who lead it 22-21. Look to Lundy for Keller. Thomas gets a hand on it, but Hunter can't get a clean pass. And nothing O'Hara could do with it after that. All right, 22-22, buckle up. West over the net, Thomas to Varndell for Hunter. Cook is there to get it. Lundy for Keller with a tip, diving dig there by O'Hara. Thomas gets it over to Varndell, and the Tigers put it back. Lundy for Perkins this time. Crawford gets to it. Hunter gets it back to Thomas, who gets it over. Manning to Keller. Perkins off the tip, but Crawford is there. Varndell for Hunter. And the point for the Tigers. For the defense on both sides has just been unbelievable. Did we talk about these teams being evenly matched, Andy? I, I, think, I, so. I think we might have mentioned that. <laughs> and they're showing exactly why right now. Maggie Means back to serve. Tigers need two points to close out set number one. Cook to Lundy. Pushes it over, but Thomas is right there. Gets it to Varndell for Hunter. And Hunter slams one right off the block. So set point for Maplewood. Timeout, Oswego Valley. It is a daddy set point coming up here for Maplewood. You never have to set the table when you get to daddy's in Clarion for dinner. We'll take a quick break here and be right back with Set Point. From Warren Area High School, this is PIAA Class 1A Semifinals. Kennedy Welding and Service is located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. The Maplewood Football Boosters are proud of our Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run towards a PIAA volleyball title. We're rooting for you and know you're making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers! And we're back here at the Joseph Bay Master Gymnasium, Warren Area High School, PIAA Class 1A semifinal. Oswego Valley from District 9, Maplewood from District 10. Tigers have a 24-22 lead and a daddy's match, or excuse me, set point. Coming up here in set number one, Tigers faithful on their feet. Means serves. Keller to Lundy for Keller. Blocked right to Keller and can't get out of the way. And the Tigers take set number one, 25 to 22. What a way to start this class 1A semifinal, Andy. 
Well, I'll tell you what, and everyone's come to play. A little early nerves, I thought, on both sides. But I thought once they both got into the flow, um, you saw a really high-level volleyball, All right, as we, you would expect. <laughs> we will be back with set number two here in this PIAA Class 1A semifinal on the YDL Sports Network. Kennedy Welding and Services, located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. Whether you're in need of a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, you've come to the right place when you come to Cox and Kenyuk Electric on Cochrane Road in Meadville. Contact Cox and Kenyuk for fast and reliable electrical repair and installation services. With over 30 years serving thousands of customers, we have the experience and quality customer service needed for any electrical project or problem you may have. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. From industrial and commercial electrical work and repair to date lines for computers and more, AMP Electric and Guys Mills is here for you. Call today for an estimate or quote on your electrical needs at 814-789-3202. AMP Electric also provides bucket truck service and 24-hour emergency service. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. And we are back here at Warner High School getting set to start set number two in this PIAA Class 1A semifinal between the District 9 champion Oswego Valley and the District 10 champion Maplewood. Maplewood takes the first set 25-22 as a one nothing lead in the match. want to take a minute to say thank you to some of our sponsors tonight helping us bring you this broadcast. A&MP Electric and Guys Mills, Industrial Commercial Electrical Work and Repair, Dateline for Computers and more, offering 24-hour emergency emergency service and bucket truck service call 814-789-3202 kennedy welding and services and guys mills offering welding services to the surrounding area including rebuilds and repairs give them a call at 814-967-2323 lubinecki welding and equipment in meadville for over 60 years lubinecki welding has been your local hometown welding repair shop lubinecki welding also offers full service steel fabricating find out more at lweinc.com Cox and Kanyak Electric in Meadville. For a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, Cox and Kanyak Electric is a place for you. Cox and Kanyak have the experience and quality service needed for any electrical project. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. Also want to say thank you to the Oswego Valley School District, Oswego Valley Sports Boosters, the Maplewood School District, Maplewood Sports Boosters, the Maplewood Fo Football Boosters, who are proud of their Lady Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run toward a PIAA volleyball title. We are rooting for you, and no, you are making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers. That again from the Maplewood football team. And we are just about set to start set number two. Man, I'm, we're not even on the floor, and I'm worn out from that first set. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, back and both teams had big runs. Ultimately went the way of the Tigers. Here we go, second set. Lundy to Cook. Crawford can't get there. Kill number six of the match for Olivia Cook. She had five in set number one. As a ball went over uh, towards the hallway there, McKenna Crawford had to go retrieve it. <laughs> and it will be Trinity Lundy back to serve for the green wave. Right to Crawford, gets it to Varndell for Hunter. Pushes over, but Lundy's there. Cook sets it for Perkins. Means gets to it. Barndell for Thomas, redirect, but Lundy's right there waiting. Cook this time, but Crawford gets it. Barndell for Thomas again, off the block and down. Sadie Thomas with a big swing. Yeah, Sadie Thomas with kill number six as well, but that was all set up by the great dig from McKenna Crawford. She's playing really well here. And speaking of Crawford, she'll go back to serve for the Tigers. Off the net. Diving for it was Keller, but couldn't quite get enough under it. Yeah, and no, that's one of those ones where it's it's tough. Uh, there's just nothing you can do nope. with it. Nope. 
Crawford puts it over. Cook sends it to Lundy, right back for Cook. Blocked away by Thomas. But the Green Wave able to dig it out, and then just an errant pass there by West. And Cook and Thomas, a little errant there by the Green Wave, right, but Cook and Thomas, two just terrific players going head-to-head -head at the net right there. <laughs> a lot of big swings back and forth in this one. Crawford serves as the Tigers lead it 3-1 to one here in the second set. Make that 3-2 to two after the service error. And that sends Perkins to the service line for the Green Wave. Thomas for Varndell, right back to Thomas. Little tip. And pushed over there by Lundy and Crawford dives, but can't get there. Yeah, I've seen big plays like that here tonight. Just very savvy, very heads up play by Lundy. And our colleague Chris Rossetti has been kind of following Maplewood through the postseason run, and he off the net, but out of play. Wow. <laughs> Oh, Perkins almost got a free one there. Uh, but he said that's something uh, Varndell's been doing a lot of here in this postseason. Mm -hmm. And she heads back to serve for the Tigers. Perkins, Cook saves it. Oh, Perkins can't get it over. A little miscommunication. It looked like maybe Lundy had the better angle to put the free ball. We wonder if that's maybe not Perkins just trying to uh, do a little too much to make up for the errant pass. And Barndell sends that one beyond the back line. A couple of uh, Maplewood leads 5-4. We do have a couple of service errors here to begin the second set. And it will be Cook serving for the green wave. Thomas. Right to Cook. Lundy for Kellert. And Keller just a little long on that one. And you can see the strategy being played out now by these attacks at the net. You know, these teams know they can't necessarily go right at each other. And it sends it over to Keller. Perkins pushes it. Crawford to Varndell or Woji. Cook is there, gets it to Lundy for Keller. Little behind, but she gets it over. Oh, and that's just a super athletic play by Avery Keller. And a diving effort there by Savannah O'Hara. Just couldn't quite get there. Manning serves. And that pass just kind of died off the arms of Madison O'Hara. And we're tied up at six. Ovi, oh, uh -huh. Oswego Valley students, easy for me to say, seem to have taken <laughs> over the balcony. Vardell sets kind of no man's land there. Crawford gets it over. Keller tips. Vardell's there. Crawford sends it back to Thomas. Man, he gets it over to Cook. Perkins. Too much. Woji back to serve. Cook passes to Lundy for Kellard again. Just in front of Thomas. Yeah, boy, nice attempt by Thomas, but just once again perfectly placed there by Avery Keller. And hey, how about that? We're tied again. Go figure. <laughs> Eva West puts the serve over. And Crawford... Just couldn't handle the serve receive. As Oswego Valley takes the 8 7 lead. Just again this time, Thomas for Varndell. O'Hara puts it over. Keller keeps it alive, and then she'll put it over for the green wave right to Thomas. Varndell this time for Hunter with a little tip. West gets there. Lundy tips it over. Diving effort there by Thomas and O'Hara. Varndell puts the free ball. Keller wins the battle at the net. He did that one with finesse instead of power and put it right between the block. 9-7, Oswego Valley leads here, trails the match one to nothing. West sends it over to Thomas. 
Vardell for Hunter. Big swing, but out of play. Just out of play. So three, a three-point lead matches the biggest for us Royal Valley so far in the match. Let's to O'Hara, Vardell, Madison O'Hara. Goes right to Cook, gets it to Lundy, and West will push. Crawford to Varndell for Hunter. Big swing right past West. Elizabeth Hunter with her third kill. Means comes back in to serve. Perkins to Lundy, right back for Perkins. Big swing, blocked down by Hunter, put right back over, and Hunter puts it back again. And Vardell just got to that before it hit the floor. And Madison O'Hara puts it over, but there's a, uh, a net violation there on Oswego Valley. One of the first real mistakes we've seen, Andy, Cook gets it to Lundy for Keller. Big swing, means dives for it, but can't get air under it. And back to a two-point lead here for the Green Wave as Keller will serve. Means puts it right back over. Cook tried to hammer it home, but Vardell was there. She sets Hunter and dug back, but out of play. Good effort there by West. Not really much else she could get that one, but uh, put it back and pray. Eleven ten. Oswego Valley leads. Maplewood serves. West to Lundy for Cook. Big swing. Barndell. Thomas answers with a big swing, and hers falls for the point. And another kill for Sadie Thomas, and guess what? We're even again at 11. <laughs> Sheila DePaines to serve. Keller to Lundy, right to Keller, right into the net. Oh, and that's just one of those things you don't see that too often uh, from Avery Keller, but the Point Maple will be now lead by one. Serve hits off the net and falls. And again, that's just, yep. there's just nothing you can do with that. But Ken Keller is going to take a timeout, try to settle his team down, trailing by two here in the second set of this PIAA Class 1A semifinal on the YDL Sports Network. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. And we are back here in Warren, PIAA Class 1A semifinal, Oswego Valley in Maplewood. Tigers lead set to 13 to 11, lead the match one to nothing. Brian Hagberg and Andy close with you for the YDL Sports Network. Thank you for watching wherever you are tonight. And the Maplewood faithful are uh, getting loud right now as the Tigers will serve. Perkins to Lundy for Cook. Big swing. Big kill for Olivia Cook. Uh, and that's exactly what you want to see coming out of a timeout if you're Oswego Valley. And Lundy will go back to serve for the Green Wave. Thomas gets it to Varndell. Back for Thomas. Apologize for that. A little interruption there. 
Crawford serves for the Tigers, but serves it long. Fourteen, thirteen. Maplewood leads here in the second set. Thomas gets it to Varndell. Back for Thomas. Thomas going to try again. Had to reach behind to get that one. Cook puts it back for Keller. O'Hara to Varndell for Woji. Keller dives for it. Tipped over by Manning. And Varndell gets it just over west at the net. Boy, again, Bailey Varndell, another terrific play at the net. Varndell to serve now for the Tigers. Tigers with a two-point lead here in the second set. And just too strong Whoa. on that one. And you can see Oswald Valley thinking about it. <laughs> and then when they let it go, it was a let it go and look with your fingers crossed, I think. Cook back to serve. Off of O'Hara, but Crawford there for it. And Thomas diving gets it over the net. Lundy for Keller. O'Hara there to dig it out, gets it to Varndell, over to Thomas with a little tip, but Lundy's there. Keller, Manning pushes over, Crawford to Varndell for Thomas. Big swing, blocked down, but O'Hara's there. And Varndell sets Savannah O'Hara on the other side, tipped over, tipped back over by Woji. Lundy for Keller, big swing, dug out, and can't be saved by Woji. Well, again, another uh, long volley. That one goes the way of the green wave, and uh, we're tied again. <laughs> and it will be McKenna Manning serving here now. Now we're going to have a little conversation. The green wave going to make sure they are uh, in rotation before they send somebody back to serve. Olivia Cook going back there to serve, I do believe. And yeah, no, yeah, it, you're right. The first time it was Mc, it's well, McKenna Manning. Manning had gone back to serve, and then Keller came over. I think they just wanted to they, – clearly they wanted to make sure they had the right player back there serving. And a heady play there by Keller to make sure. Larndell sets it for Thomas. Big swing. Cook can't handle this one. Another kill for Sadie Thomas, unofficially with nine. And back to the service line. Thomas to Keller. Keller sends it to Lundy and then tipped over by Cook. Barndell gives it back to Thomas in the back row. Cook is right there. Lundy for Keller this time. Crawford diving attempt, but goes out of play. Another kill for Avery Keller. Eight. Up to eight. And it will be Eva West serving now for the Green Wave. Uh, just quite didn't get enough on that. It looked, Brian, looked like a little knuckleball coming yeah, out of there. I'm watching. Uh, Oswego Valley that athletic director Bill Howard usually very reserved. I'm, I've seen him over in the corner. He's living and dying with every point here. <laughs> and Woji gets it over Cook, tipped over by Lundy, sent to Barndell for Hunter, and she finds the vacated space. Back to a two-point advantage here for the Tigers. As we are going to see Jaden Fleischman check in for Eva West. Fleischman number 18 for the Green Wave. Roji serves it long. Again, a Keller to serve for the Green Wave. Puts it over. O'Hara gets it to O'Hara. Back to Thomas. It was Madison to Savannah. Lundy for Cook, big swing. Barndell nearly dug that one yeah, out. Yeah, but that would have been one of the greatest things you'd love to see. <laughs> if Cook had a ton on that. We are tied again at 18. Just a quick breather there for West. 
comes right back in. Kellert serving. Thomas off the net. Barndell's there. And then O'Hara pushes it over. Lundy for Cook. Thomas gets to that one. Barndell for O'Hara. West is there right at the net. And it's Savannah O'Hara who puts it down for the Tigers. And what sticks out to me about some of these great hitters, Sadie Thomas, Olivia Cook, Avery Keller, is they're, they're much more than that. They're, we've seen some of the great digs they've had here tonight, just complete volleyball players. Means serving for the Tigers, who lead it 19-18 here in the second set. Lundy for Cook. Off the block, Crawford gets it to Varndell. Or O'Hara, that was Madison on the swing. Cook. Hunter nearly had the block, but it came down on the Maplewood side of the net. And we are tied again at 19. Crawford gets it to Varndell for Hunter. Off the block to Lundy. Keller over for West. Crawford to Varndell. Sets O'Hara blocked away, and then the Tigers put it right back over. Lundy for Cook. Hits it into the net. And then out of play, the uh, up official ruled that Maplewood had tipped that swing into the net. Green Wave kept it alive, but then put it out of play. And Maplewood the first to 20 here in set number two. And that serve goes just out of play. And Maplewood's Maple looking for a tip. tip. And they're not going to get it. Boy, and McKenna Crawford with her hands on her head. You can't <laughs> believe it. Maybe Perkins serving for the green wave. We're tied at 20. Crawford to Vardell for Hunter. Big swing. Tipped. And the point goes to Maplewood. Crawford serves. Keller to Lundy for Cook. Right down the line. Or oh, and when uh Oswego Valley needs a point there. I sent old, reliable Olivia Cook with yet another kill. And now she'll go back to serve. Set tied at 21. Rondell dives and Crawford gets it over the net. Cook to Lundy for Keller. Tipped. What a play by Keller. Yeah, and just doing a great job of reading where the defense wasn't and putting it right there. Green Wave leaves it 22-21. Cook serving. Crawford to Varndell for Thomas. Lundy and Cook both there. Keller will put it over. Crawford gets it to Varndell again. This time she sets Thomas on the other side. Dug out and back <laughs> over the net and down for a point. Oh my goodness. What and a play. Sheila Pankoff's going to take a timeout. Holy cow, what a dig. I believe that was Perkins that got that one, put it right over the net, and tucked it just inside the line for the point for Oswego Valley. Yeah, and so Oswego Valley goes up two. They're looking to even this match at one set apiece. And uh, to this point, this is everything you expected, and maybe even then some. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said at the start of this set, we're not even on the floor and we're exhausted up here. But you can't imagine the effort that these players are putting on, on both sides. Again, a, a trip to the state championship on the line. Oswego Valley, the District 9 champion. This is their deepest run ever in the PIAA Volleyball Championships. Maplewood seeking its sixth state championship. And the winner here tonight will get either Sacred Heart Academy or West Branch in the state championship game. That semifinal match was postponed tonight due to the weather, so they won't know until tomorrow who they're going to play. But they will play for a state championship on Saturday. 23-21, Oswego Valley leads it here in set number two. Maplewood leads the match one to nothing. Cook serves. Thomas 
to Varndell. Back to Thomas. Down for the kill. And get when Maplewood, when you need a point, who do you go to? Sadie Thomas. Varndell back to serve. Varndell puts it over. Cook to Lundy. Back to Cook. Going to be a free ball here for the Tigers. They're offered to Varndell. Sets Thomas again. Big swing by Sadie Thomas. Back to back. And again, boy, not a great serve received there from the Green Wave. They had to play the free ball over the net. Gives Maple with a chance to set their offense for Thomas there. And we're now tied at 23. Perkins to Lundy. West will push over, and he's going to get called for a carry and give Maplewood set point. Oh, tough call there but for uh, West, just trying to put the ball over the net, gets called for the carry. And it does give Maplewood the daddy's set point. You'll never have to set the table when you get daddy's in Clarion for dinner. Also want to say thank you to all. Our Hunter Incorporated family-owned business started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding area. Owner Ralph Hunter, and in addition to a variety of excavating services, the company also offers gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Find out more at rhunterinc.business.site. Also want to say thank you to Belco Tool and Manufacturing, located at 225 Terrace Street, Extension in Meadville. They want to wish the Lady Tigers good luck in the PIAA playoffs. We are rooting for you for all your tool and die needs. Call Belk for Tool Manufacturing at 814-337-3403. That's Belco Tool and Manufacturing in Meadville. Set point for the Tigers. It'll be Bailey Varndell to serve. Serve is over the net. Manning to Lundy for Kellert. Dug out there by O'Hara, and then Keller puts it in the net, and the double hit gives the set to Maplewood. Twenty-five, twenty-three. The Tigers take set number two, and now have a two-nothing lead in this PIAA Class One A semifinal. We'll be back with the third set on the YDL Sports Network. Kennedy Welding and Services, located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. Whether you're in need of a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, you've come to the right place when you come to Cox and Kenyuk Electric on Cochrane Road in Meadville. Contact Cox and Kenyuk for fast and reliable electrical repair and installation services. With over 30 years serving thousands of customers, we have the experience and quality customer service needed for any electrical project or problem you may have. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. From industrial and commercial electrical work and repair to date lines for computers and more, AMP Electric and Guys Mills is here for you. Call today for an estimate or quote on your electrical needs at 814-789-3202. AMP Electric also provides bucket truck service and 24-hour emergency service. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. Located at 15428 Sheets Road in Guy's Mills, the R. Hunter Inc. is a family-owned business started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding areas. Owner Ralph Hunter offers a variety of excavating services as well as gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Give them a call today at 814-724-9076. Nestled in the northwestern corner of Potter County, the Oswego Valley School District serves families from Shingle House and Oswego Boroughs as well as Clara, Sharon, Oswego, and Ceres Townships providing educational opportunities to children in both Potter and McKean County. The Oswego Valley School District would like to wish the Green Wave good luck in tonight's semifinal match. And we are back here 
in Warren, PIAA Class 1A semifinal. Maplewood and Oswego Valley Tigers lead two to nothing here as we're about set to start the third set. Also want to take a moment to remind you that any that this uh, broadcast is under copyright and any reproduction of this broadcast without the express written permission of the PIAA and the YDL Sports Network is prohibited. When Brian just watching, well, I'll get there in a set, watching both huddles during the uh, break there. Maplewood, as you see the service there, there from the Green Wave. Maplewood very focused, uh, very intent. Uh, to Coach Bancroft's message in there. And, and Oswego Valley didn't seem like any panic. They actually looked almost relaxed. Not um, So we'll see uh, if that means anything. Might mean nothing, but uh, might mean something. Crawford serves. West to Lundy. It's Perkins blocked down by Thomas. <laughs> the fans are yelling. <laughs> the scoreboard read 1-1 one, one there for a second. Just a mistaken uh, push on the tally. And the <laughs> Maplewood fans quick to point it out as that sort of goes into the net. You don't want to lose a single point here in this third set. Perkins. Crawford gets it to Varndell. Sets Thomas. And she gets it just past Perkins. Another kill for Sadie Thomas. She's in double digits. And Barndell will serve. Perkins to Lundy. Sets Cook with the tip. Blocked down. Thomas and Woji. So Maplewood off to a strong start here, three-point lead. I, I don't remember it, it, the lead ever being more than three on either side. It's uh, just uh, Maplewood had it a, a bigger oh, one. That's early. right. That's As right. Was, serves into the net. Yep, you're right. It was 12-6 Maplewood in the first set. But other than that, I mean, this has been very tightly contested the whole way through. And that lead was short-lived thanks to the OB9 yeah. up and run. Cook serves. Gives it right back to the Tigers. And those are the little mistakes that uh, Oswego Valley cannot afford to make right now. Manning gets it to Lundy, back for Manning. And she hits it strong. Thomas to serve the Tigers. You just get a sense right now that it... Uh, Dug down off the head of a pair of oh, oh wow. What a play by McKenna Manning. <laughs> Had to go down and get that serve. Puts it right back over the net. And uh, O'Hara just never saw it. Hit right off the net. And probably would have spun out of play if she'd have been able to move. Barndell sets Madison O'Hara. Cook gets to it. Gets it to Lundy for Keller. Puts it over. Crawford for Barndell. Woji. Down low to get it was Cook. It goes off the net, and Lundy can't handle it. Seven-three, Maplewood leading here in the third set leads the match two to nothing. Put to Lundy for Kellert, blocked down by Hunter, and put back by Hunter again. But Kellert saves it. Keller one more time, and this time she puts down what the kill. Great stick to it this there from Avery Keller. <laughs> Keller was just not going to be denied on that point. Uh, Thomas, Keller, and Cook all on double figure kills to the surprise of virtually no one. West serves it. Thomas to Varndell for Hunter. Right to West. Put back by O'Hara and off Manning and out. Means on to serve for the Tigers. Cook. Lundy saves it, but Perkins unable to put it over the net. Let's see if uh, well, I might use an early timeout here if I'm Ken Keller, but um, of course he knows his team better than I do, so. <laughs> 
Nine for Maplewood. Mean serves. Cook to Lundy for Keller. Off the block, Thomas gets it to Varndell. For Hunter, blocked down. Mean saves it, and Crawford puts it over the net. Lundy for Keller again. Big swing. This time it falls. I'll tell you what Means almost went crashing right into the stands there. And again, just the effort on every point from both of these teams. Don't want to let anything hit the floor. Keller serves. Uh, Means can't handle that one. Crawford to Varndell. Madison O'Hara push it over. Perkins to Lundy for Cook. Hammers it right down the line. The green wave back open two here. Keller serving. Ten seven, Maplewood now as Sheila Despaines comes in. Perkins to Lundy back for Cook and out of her reach. Timing just not there on that play between Lundy and Cook. Serve, it's over, dug out by Perkins and just- Lundy and Varndell yep. come together at the net. And Varndell gets that one. It's a five point lead now for the Tigers. Your two uh, players to watch. That going at it right going there. Going at it right at the net. <laughs> and uh, that time Varndell comes away with the better end of it. Perkins to Lundy for Cook. Off the block. Dug out Varndell for Thomas. She'll just punch it over. Lundy tries to set Cook again, and then Hunter whiffed on the swing. Thomas gets the serve from Lundy. Varndell back to Thomas, and West can't handle that. Another big hit point. Thomas has been great. Hunter's been great. Um, just uh, the attack here for Maple, they come at you in waves. And no pun be, intended there. <laughs> will be Hunter serving for the Tigers. And she puts that one past the end line. Perkins serves. Thomas. To Varndell, back to Thomas, little tip, but Perkins is there. Lundy gets it for Cook, and O'Hara tried to dig that one out. But that was, that was a there. valiant effort, but uh, just too much on that one from Olivia Cook. Thirteen ten now, Maplewood. Perkins serves. Varndell sets Thomas, locked down but out of play. Bell back to the line. Perkins gets it to Lundy for Cook. Blocked around by Thomas. Saved there by Perkins, and Keller puts it over. I want to play by Perkins. Rondell for Thomas. Big swing off the block. West is there. Cook pushes, but out of play. Right idea up there by Cook. Yep, just uh, just out of play there. 15-10, Maplewood here in the third. Tigers lead the match two to nothing. State championship game berth on the line. Yeah, and now Coach Keller is going to get a timeout here for us, Whale Valley. Uh, we're going to take a timeout with them. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more of this PIAA Class 1A semifinal 
on the YDL Sports Network. The Oswego Valley Sports Boosters are a proud supporter of all Oswego Valley Green Wave athletics. The Sports Boosters would like to congratulate the Lady Green Wave volleyball team on their tremendous regular season and wish them the best of luck in tonight's playoff matchup. Go Green Wave! The Maplewood Football Boosters are proud of our Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run towards a PIAA volleyball title. We're rooting for you and know you're making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers! What's the recipe for surprising the kids, treating yourself, and ditching dish duty? You're looking at it. Order your Pizza Hut faves like Original Pan, Original Stuffed Crust, and more at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. Sixteen to ten, Maplewood leads Oswego Valley here in the third set. Tigers lead the match two to nothing, and Maplewood faithful starting to feel a trip to the state championship here. Trying to rally their team to finish out this set. Yep. They are nine points away. Yep. Can Maplewood close it out? Can Oswego Valley rally? We're gonna find out here. Seventeen ten now Maplewood Barndell still serving. Perkins gets it this time. Lundy for West. O'Hare there gets it back to Barndell for Thomas. West gets it to Lundy for West and blocked back by O'Hara. But right there is a green wave and Cook puts it in the corner. Yeah, again another nice play by Praylon Perkins to help set that up. Cook serves just past the end line. It does not get much closer than that. Thomas. But Oswego Valley not going to go away. And again, apologize. There's just some uh, little bit of connection issues here. I assume being brought on by the weather. It's 1812 Maplewood. Thomas gets it to Varndell. Woji puts it right in the net. Manning back to serve for the green wave. Crawford to Varndell. Thomas tips over. Diving play there by Perkins. Kellert off Varndell and out of play. Manning serves. And serves an ace. And here come the green wave. Down to three, and timeout, Sheila Bancroft to Maplewood. So again, Oswego Valley trailed by as many as seven. They've cut it to three here. Uh, and again, understand there's been a couple minor interruptions. Again, it's just some connection issues that happens occasionally when, the, when there's uh, inclement weather in the area, but uh, hopefully we've got that worked out. Again, Maplewood leading here two sets to none, 25-22 and 25-23. So it's not like uh, Maplewood's been running away with this. These are closely contested sets, and we're seeing that right now as the green wave have battled back to within three. Be McKenna Manning to serve. Crawford 
to Varndell, back for Woji, but out of play. All right, so here we go. It's back to within two. And we saw this in the first set. Andy Maplewood got out to a big lead. And Oswego Valley was able to battle back. And O'Hara tipped down by Keller. O'Hara's pass went over the net. Keller was ready for it. Last six points to the Green Wave from 18 to 11 to 18 17. Manning to serve. Crawford to Varndell. Or O'Hara right there to Cook. Gets it to Perkins, and Keller will put over the free ball. Crawford for Varndell again. For O'Hara, off of Cook and out. You saw her just at the last second tried to take her hand away. Yeah, I, I, that was awfully close. Would it have been out of bounds? I don't know, but you can't fault Olivia Cook there. But uh, a much-needed point for Maplewood. They go back up, too. Woji to serve. Gets it to Perkins. Over to Manning. Keller puts over the free ball. Woji to Varndell for O'Hara. Manning to Lundy for Keller with the tip, and she gets the point. Boy, that is several times she has done that tonight, just finding the void in the defense. Eva West back to serve. Green Wave back within a point. Madison O'Hara to Varndell. Thomas back row. Off of West and off the wall. <laughs> I love the reaction there from Bailey Varndell. And Maplewood gets to 20. Means will come on to serve. Keller. To Lundy back for Keller, puts it over. Thomas gets to it. Varndell for Hunter, a little behind. West to Lundy, Keller. Thomas dives, but Crawford and Means can't get there. Or in the catalyst behind Oswego Valley really getting back into it in this third set has been Avery Keller. Has had a really strong match for the Green Wave all night long, and now she goes to the service line. Oswego Valley trailing by a point here in the third. Have to win this set to keep the match alive. Hunter tips. Manny can't get there. And, and again, just Hunter finding that void in the defense, just putting it softly where they weren't. And now it will be Sheila Despain's on to serve for the Tigers. Four points away now from a trip to Cumberland Valley. Perkins to Lundy for Cook. And took just enough off to keep Crawford from getting the angle on it. And Madison O'Hara comes back in as Lundy serves for the green wave. And Crawford can't get it. We are tied at 21 here in set number three. What a response from the green wave. Maplewood, looking Lundy. to answer. Thomas gets it to Varndell over to Hunter's block down, but Hunter gets to it. Means will put it over. Keller to Lundy for Cook. Blocked down by Thomas and Hunter. Oh, man, you want to talk about a big-time confrontation at the net. What a huge point for the Tigers. Offered to serve. Cook gets it to Lundy. Manning will put it over. Crawford to Varndell for Thomas. Tipped. Perkins pushes it back. And O'Hara puts over the free ball. Kellert to Lundy. Cook hammers it. Back and forth we go. That time Olivia Cook with the answer. Raylan Perkins to serve. Thomas. Varndell. Thomas. Big swing down the line. Gets oh, it in. Oh, my. Sadie Thomas. 
both teams going to their big hitters when they need points. Cook and Thomas taking turns. It'll be Barndell to serve for the Tigers. Leading 23-22 here in the third. Perkins to Lundy. Cook tipped off Thomas and out. Huge point there for Cook in the green wave. We're tied at 23. Can Oswego Valley force a fourth set? Cook serves. Crawford. Barndell for Thomas. Lays it over. Cook's there. Lundy. Keller behind. Tips it. O'Hara gets to it. Barndell. Thomas. Big swing. Dug out. And almost into our position up here. Set point. Match point. Daddy's match point coming up for Maplewood. You never have to set the table when you get to Daddy's and Clarion for dinner. Sadie Thomas to serve. Birth in the state championship on the line for the Tigers. Manning gets it to Lundy. Kellard has to put over the free ball. O'Hara gets it to Varndell. Woji blocked down by Kellert. Thomas from the back row. Cook is there. Lundy. West puts it over. Thomas gets it to Varndell. O'Hara blocked down. Varndell. Woji tips. And that's it. Maplewood will go to the state championship. Tigers sweep, but it was a hard fought three set win for Maplewood. Oswego Valley fought them all the way to the end. Oh my, just what, what more could you volleyball. ask for in a state oh. semifinal? Again, these two teams left it all out on the floor tonight. Congratulations to the Maplewood Tigers advance to the state championship on Saturday. Uh, well, congratulations to Oswego Valley. Um, a season for the ages. Um, you, you know, and you, you see some of the Green Wave players coming off, tears in their eyes. And you, you feel for them because you get to, to this point, like you said, a season for the ages. Absolutely nothing for Oswego Valley to hang their heads about. Put up a fight against one of the premier teams, not only in District 10, but in the entire state in Class A in Maplewood. Tigers come away with a hard-fought sweep. They will head to Cumberland Valley and play for a state championship for the first time since 2017. Yeah, and again, well-earned. Again, We weren't even sure if they were going to get out of District 10. I, that, that's no knock on them. That's just how good Cochranton was. And with, with District 10 only taking one team to states, uh, you didn't know. Uh, they beat Cochranton for the district championship and then have swept their way uh, nine sets to nothing here to get to the state final. But they had to earn it tonight. Yeah, and they, again, Oswego Valley certainly uh, made them earn this trip back to Cumberland Valley in the Class A state championship match. Uh, again, they will, uh, Maplewood will face either Sacred Heart Academy or West Branch. They won't find out until tomorrow. That match was postponed due to the uh, inclement weather today across the Commonwealth. But I think uh, right now, I don't think they really care who it is <laughs> as the uh, Tigers students storm the court and celebrate with their players. Yeah, and that's uh, there is no better feeling than that right there. Of course, you see, uh, you know, the beauty of sports here, the, the celebration on one side, and, and you see the uh, congratulations going around the other side as well. As how the Maplewood students and uh, players form a circle, this is interesting. Um, but again, Brian, everything, everything you could have asked for from a state semifinal. Uh, the score is going to say three nothing. Um, all three of those sets could have gone either way. Again, credit to Maplewood. Uh, they got the key points when they had to. And uh, well, I, I don't know what, what more I can say. It's just that lived up to the billing. Oh, yeah. You could not have asked for I mean, other than this thing going five sets. And I don't know, Andy. I don't know if you and I would have had the stamina to do five sets tonight. <laughs> Certainly the way these uh, players left it out all, all out on the floor. Uh, you know, again, for both teams, Oswego Valley has absolutely – nothing to be ashamed of here. This was an incredibly hard-fought match, and uh, Maplewood just had the answers when they needed them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when you have two teams that are that evenly matched at this level, it's one play here, one play there that that makes the difference, and that was the difference tonight. Uh, you know, Maplewood came up with those key points uh, when they had to, but, you know, again, um, 
and that's why they're going to the state championship. And that's listen, it's hard to get there. It's hard to get to this point. Um, you know, just what a match. Um, two great teams, great programs. Uh, kudos to everyone. Um, just phenomenal stuff. All right, with that, we're going to take a quick break and uh, be back with the post-game wrap-up here from Warren Area High School. This has been the PIAA Class 1A State Semifinals. You're watching the YDL Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back at the post-game. Kennedy Welding and Services, located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. Whether you're in need of a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, you've come to the right place when you come to Cox and Kenyuk Electric on Cochrane Road in Meadville. Contact Cox and Kenyuk for fast and reliable electrical repair and installation services. With over 30 years serving thousands of customers, we have the experience and quality customer service needed for any electrical project or problem you may have. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. From industrial and commercial electrical work and repair to date lines for computers and more, AMP Electric and Guys Mills is here for you. Call today for an estimate or quote on your electrical needs at 814-789-3202. AMP Electric also provides bucket truck service and 24-hour emergency service. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. Nestled in the northwestern corner of Potter County, the Oswego Valley School District serves families from Shingle House and Oswego boroughs, as well as Clara, Sharon, Oswego, and Ceres townships, providing educational opportunities to children in both Potter and McKean County. The Oswego Valley School District would like to wish the Green Wave good luck in tonight's semifinal match. Located at 15428 Sheets Road in Guy's Mills, the R. Hunter, Inc. is a family-owned business started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding area. The owner, Ralph Hunter, offers a variety of excavating services, as well as gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Give them a call today at 814-724-9076. Belco Tool Manufacturing, located at 225 Terrace Street Extension in Meadville, would like to wish the Lady Tigers good luck in the PIAA playoffs. We're rooting for you. For all your tool and die needs, call Belco Tool and Manufacturing at 814-337-3403. That's 814-337-3403. That's Belco Tool and Manufacturing in Meadville. The Oswego Valley Sports Boosters are a proud supporter of all Oswego Valley Green Wave athletics. The Sports Boosters would like to congratulate the Lady Green Wave volleyball team on their tremendous regular season and wish them the best of luck in tonight's playoff matchup. Go Green Wave. The Maplewood Football Boosters are proud of our Tigers and want to wish them luck in their run towards a PIAA volleyball title. We're rooting for you and know you're making Maplewood proud. Go Tigers! Hi, Chris Rossetti here from D9and10sports.com. I wanted to take a second to tell you about one of the best restaurants in all of Western Pennsylvania, the Allegheny Grill in Foxburg, PA. With indoor and outdoor dining, you can enjoy prime rib all weekend long, or perhaps it is their full wings served on Thursday wing nights that you're after. From celebrating a special occasion to hanging out with family and friends, the Allegheny Grill in Foxburg is the place to be. As they like to say, you come for the food and you stay for the view. Reserve your table today at AlleghenyGrill.com. Are you hungry? Of course you're hungry. And Daddy's on Main Street in Clarion is ready to tackle that hunger for you. Serving amazing food since 2008, Daddy's has been Clarion's go-to stop whenever hunger strikes. Whether it's a good old-fashioned hot dog or hamburger, a salad, or something from their rotating chef's menu. Yes, I said rotating chef's menu. Daddy has you covered. 
You can order ahead by calling 814-223-4687 or come on in and dine in. Have a big event you are catering? Daddy's can do that too. Like Daddy's on Facebook at Daddy's Clarion and stop in today. You won't be disappointed. And we're back here at Warren Area High School, Maplewood, a 3-0 winner over Oswego Valley in the PIAA Class 1A semifinal, 25-22, 25-23, and 25-23. Uh, it'll go down as a sweep in the books, but absolutely a hard-fought one at that. I want to take a look at uh, some unofficial stats here as we're in the Allegheny Grill of Foxburg post-game show. The Allegheny Grill, where you... Come for the food and stay for the view. Visit them online at AlleghenyGrill.com. For Oswego Valley, uh, Olivia Cook finished with uh, 15 kills. Avery Kellert with 16 for the Green Wave. And for Maplewood, Sadie Thomas leads the way with 15 kills. And three blocks, if I'm reading Andy's handwriting correctly. Uh, Elizabeth Hunter had seven kills. Woji with four and a block. And those are our, again, unofficial stats here in the postgame as we are working to get our player of the game up here in the broadcast booth. Again, do want to take a moment. A minute and thank some of the great uh, businesses who helped to uh, sponsor tonight's broadcast so that we could bring you this state semifinal. Uh, Oswego Valley and Maplewood School Districts, uh, both schools wanted to wish their teams the best of luck. Uh, and both the Oswego Valley Sports Boosters and the Maplewood Sports and Football Boosters, along with Belco Tool and Manufacturing at 225 Terrace Street Extension in Meadville. They want to wish the Lady Tigers good luck in the PIAA playoffs and let them know that we are rooting for you. And for all your tool and die needs, call Belco Tool and Manufacturing at 814-337-3403. And that's Belco Tool and Manufacturing in Meadville. Also, Ralph Hunter, owner of R. Hunter Incorporated, a family-owned business, started in 1966, providing services to Crawford County and the surrounding area. In addition to a variety of excavating services, the company also offers gravel sales from several gravel pits in the area. Find out more at rhunterinc.business.site. And with that, as you can see now, our Allegheny Grill of Foxburg player of the match, Maplewood's Bailey Bardell. Uh, first of all, Bailey, congratulations on the win. Uh, how are you guys feeling right now? I mean, it's amazing. It's everything that we've ever won, and I'm just very proud of my team. Uh, again, we Andy and I talked about it a number of times. It's going to go down in the books as a sweep, uh, but it has to be one of the hardest earned sweeps you guys have ever had. Yeah, we. I mean, we didn't play our best match by any means if you look at the stats, but I think we kept up our composure, and when we were down, we brought ourselves back up and just keeping the confidence and believing in one another. And we came back, we fought hard, and we won the match in three, so. Uh, I mean, was this what you uh, <laughs> expected to get out of Oswego Valley coming into this semifinal contest, uh, just a battle back and forth from start to finish? Not at all. I mean, they're a very good team. I didn't expect them to beat them in three by any chance, but um, we're also a very good team, and it just came down to who played the best ball tonight, and it was us. Uh, you know, you and I talked a, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago now, uh, when you guys were up here in, in Eisenhower, was right after that uh, early season loss to Cochranton. And you said at that point that it, it kind of served to motivate you guys to play some of your best volleyball. Do you feel like you've done that in the, in the game since, in the week since? Oh, definitely. And playing them in the District, District 10 match, I think that was one of our best games of the year. And after that game, I think we've just continued to rise above. And we've just been playing good ball ever since. And we're going to continue that to the state championship match on Saturday. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you guys have to have hit uh, – all but one of your season goals now, and you got that one more in front of you. Um, you won't find out your opponent until tomorrow night. The other semifinal was postponed because of the weather. So, okay. uh, so you get an extra day of rest. Uh, are you guys going to try to uh, do some uh, little scouting, maybe find a, find a stream of that uh, semifinal, see what we can find out? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, us as a team, we always watch film on our own, and Sheila always does a scouting report on teams. So depending on who it was, I'm sure, or who it is, we'll definitely be prepared. Uh, you know, as a, as a program, you guys head back to the state championship first time since uh, 2017. 
uh, how's it feel for you guys uh, to be part of this group that gets back to the state championship? Um, it feels amazing. I mean, I watched my sister her junior year. She played in the state championship match. And as the younger sister, I watched that game and I was like, ever since then, I wanted to be a part of it. And my senior year, here I am. So it's just amazing feeling. <laughs> uh, you know, as this match progressed, it seemed like there would be times where, you know, each team went to their, their big hitter, obviously cooked for, for Oswego, and, and you would turn to Sadie Thomas when you needed a big kill. How beneficial is that to have somebody like her on the outside that you know if you need a big swing, you could set that right to her? Yeah, it's amazing to have somebody that we can always count on. And it's not just Sadie who picked it up tonight. It was everybody else. But, um, yeah, we can definitely depend on Sadie, and it's good to have that she can have our backs as much as we can have hers. All right, Bailey, one, one final thing here. You know, as you're kind of taking this atmosphere, you had a, a ton of fans, uh, you know, brave the weather to come in and support you here tonight. I, I certainly expect you guys will get the same kind of uh, reception to come to the Valley on Saturday. What are you most looking forward to playing in the state championship game? Um, I mean, I'm most looking forward to playing, obviously. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I'm just, I mean, our community is going to come and support. And I mean, there's nothing out. There's one more game of the season left to play. So we just have to leave it all out on the floor. All right, our Allegheny Gorilla Foxburg player of the match, Maplewood Senior Bailey Varndell. Uh, congratulations again. Thank Best you. of luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break and be back to do our final wrap-up here from Warren Area High School on the YDL Sports Network. Kennedy Welding and Services, located at 31,000 Guys Mills Road in Guys Mills, offers welding services to the surrounding area, including rebuilds and repairs. Call Kennedy Welding today at 814-967-2323 or stop by and see what they can do for you. Whether you're in need of a residential, commercial, or industrial electrician, you've come to the right place when you come to Cox and Kenyuk Electric on Cochrane Road in Meadville. Contact Cox and Kenyuk for fast and reliable electrical repair and installation services. With over 30 years serving thousands of customers, we have the experience and quality customer service needed for any electrical project or problem you may have. Find out more at coxkanelectric.com. From industrial and commercial electrical work and repair to date lines for computers and more, AMP Electric and Guys Mills is here for you. Call today for an estimate or quote on your electrical needs at 814-789-3202. AMP Electric also provides bucket truck service and 24-hour emergency service. Since 1958, Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville has been a welding repair shop that offers full-service steel fabricating. Lubinecki Welding and Equipment has developed the reputation of excellent workmanship and quality production. So send us your design or print so we can get you an estimate and schedule for your job today. Find out more online at lwe-inc.com. That's Lubinecki Welding and Equipment in Meadville. Back one more time here from the Joseph A. Massive Gymnasium at Warren Area High School. Our uh, final thoughts here on this PIAA Class 1A semifinal. Maplewood, a 3 nothing winner over Oswego Valley, 25-22, 25-23, The Tigers head back to the state championship the first time since 2017. Congratulations to Maplewood and, of course, congratulations to Oswego Valley. A season for the ages for the Green Wave and absolutely nothing for those young ladies to hang their heads about. And I'm not sure if you could hear while we were chatting with Bailey Varndell, our Allegheny Girl Foxburg player of the match, but... Uh, the DJ here was putting on a little closing time. I think they're uh, insinuating that maybe it's time for us to go home and we are going to do just that. Uh, stay tuned to the YDL Sports Network. All kinds of football playoff action coming up Friday and Saturday this week. We've got Central Clarion County, Port Allegheny, Eisenhower and Reynolds in the District 10 Championship, Port Allegheny and Brockway in the District 9 Championship, Uh and our colleague Chris Rossetti will be down in Cumberland Valley tracking these Maplewood Tigers as they go for a volleyball state championship. So you want to stay tuned to the YDL Sports Network for all of that. And for Andy Close, this is Brian Hagberg saying thank you so much to everyone for watching and so long from Warren Area High School.